I hope you can hear me properly. Um, so I think uh, let, let's start now. So yeah, um, we're talking today about the the Eco 25 and 27 kilowatt units, so which we launched uh, last year in September. So you might be familiar with our Snap Inverter range. So this is, so to say, the newest member of the Snap Inverter range. Um, and um, let me first uh, give you a bit of an overview uh, of the inverter itself. So as you expect, this is a Snap Inverter. Um, it is, uh, or it comes, let's say, with all the monitoring uh, inbuilt. So data logging, hardware, the Wi-Fi monitoring that you can commission it, uh, as well as that you can see um, on your mobile phone or a smart device. Um, then the energy management function, the relay comes uh, inbuilt, as well as a uh, very important thing for the commercial projects, it's the power control function. So if you come across project requirements of limited export or zero export, uh, so that's uh, this function is already inbuilt, uh, as well as there is a requirement of connecting the, the system to a third party communication system or SCADA system or something like that. Uh, so there are interfaces like Modbus, uh, TCP, RTU, uh, or uh, other push services functions in, in build. So no extra cost on that, uh, but that uh, that's what you might know already uh, from the other snap inverter range. That's basically no difference here. Uh, so the monitoring platform, soloweb.com, you can use, of course, uh, as well as uh, the, the smartphone monitoring, what you can see here in the picture uh, on the right hand side. Um, another feature or, or character of the Eco is that they're extremely lightweight. Uh, there's very high power density uh, in that inverter. So they're basically at the same uh, size as the SIMO 10 to 20 kilowatt units um, compared to other units on the market, which are up to, let's say, uh, 27 kilowatts, uh, they are basically half of the weight. And that particular uh, makes it easy to install, um, you know, when it's about lifting the device onto the wall or to mount it. Uh, it makes quite some difference why either we use two or three people uh, to mount it. Um, well, uh, some, some people are telling me they do it alone because of this, this, this hinge technology where you hinge it in on the wall is pretty easy. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know whether I would recommend that, uh, but uh, well, it, it's, it's, it's an easy process. Um, so another feature which you also know already from the snap inverter range is that the DC isolator that is inbuilt in the inverter uh, is uh, compliant with the installation standard. So usually there's no additional DC isolator adjacent to the inverter needed. Um, Having said that, with the uh, Eco27, uh, there might be some exceptions because of uh, the, the rating of the uh, DC isolator. Okay, I just get the message from some people who can't hear me properly. Uh, just double check uh, in a moment. Okay, so I got the feedback. Thanks for that. Uh, that uh, seems like most of the people can hear me. So in this case, it might be uh, more on the user side if someone can't hear me. Um, okay, I continue uh, with the DC isolator. So uh, I just mentioned uh, the inbuilt DC isolator um, is usually compliant with the installation center, so no additional DC isolators are needed, so that which saves balance of system costs. Um, some exceptions might occur with the Eco27, depending on what panel are you using, uh, because uh, the DC isolator current rating, our um, uh, rating is sometimes not 
uh, except let's say the international current rating uh, sometimes is not uh, applying to the Australian standard. That doesn't mean that the word is, is uh, less safe or something like that. It's just uh, that the standard um, requires a different rating. Um, so that's why in worst case, so to say, you would need still the, the, the JSON PCI as well, that's all. With the ECO25, you usually see that uh, that is fine um, with uh, having usually four strings connected, for example. But talking about um, uh, installation and sizing and that kind of stuff, I'll come uh, there uh, about that in a minute. Um, yeah, also a smart installation features is because of um, there is basically inside the inverter there's a bit of thin rail space so if this is a requirement that you have um, DC surge protection so not to forget, uh, mix it up with AC so here we're talking about DC surge protection uh, so what you can do here on the thin rail uh, you can uh, plug on a thin rail mount surge protection um, uh, as you can see here in, the, in these three pictures um, and and therefore you don't need an additional enclosure where you put the search uh, arresters in there um, so uh, that also saves balance the system costs. Another feature is I wanted to mention uh, that um, there is a double pole fusing uh, inbuilt in the inverter and the ECOS so uh, you also need you, know, so you don't need an additional fuse box somewhere uh, to have this double pole fusing. So again, saves balance the system costs. Apart from that, um, the housing of the ECO, as well actually as the SIMO 10 to 20 kilowatts, they come with an IP66 uh, uh, protection, uh, which is pretty much the highest uh, uh, protection available on the market. So coming uh, to some more features of the ECO, um, uh, one uh, major difference to the SIMO inverters is that it has uh, one MPP tracker. So um, that means you connect all, all the strings to one tracker. However, you also have in terms of the monitoring, you've got two measuring channels available. Um, so everything what you connect on DC1, it is like, Got basically three connections on measuring channel DC1. Um, two measuring channels are called then DC2. Uh, sorry, the second one. Um, and uh, that allows you to give you um, already a sense of um, if there is, for example, a string fuse blown or if there's an issue with a string. Uh, because let's say um, it could be that if you use, for example, uh, uh, three strings, uh, like six in total, um, then it would. Um, uh, have a deviation, for example, of uh, a third uh, per measuring channel. So you can already detect if there's a string fuse blown, for example. Um, yeah, so um, to have to have the string fusing in build, of course, you have these uh, integrated fuse holders, uh, double pole fusing, um, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, Pretty much it. Uh, I think I mentioned all the points from these slides already. Um, another feature which uh, is in the inverter, which uh, actually uh, was not at the very first when it brought out, it, uh, it's, it came additionally a couple of months ago. Um, it is the dynamic peak manager. Uh, that is an algorithm that can detect shading. So if you have get uh, typically in the early mornings or late afternoon, a little bit of shading condition. Uh, so this algorithm can detect shading uh, and therefore it can find what we call the global maximum power point uh, and therefore improve uh, the situation a little bit. Of course, uh, shading always has a negative impact, but that algorithm, which is uh, switched on by default, um, it uh, can uh, improve the situation. Um, actually, this is not just uh, only with the ECO, uh, the other SNAP inverters have that as well. Yeah, the IP protection class 66 I mentioned already, uh, so that's pretty much the highest protection class on the market. Uh, a few words on the ventilation system that uh, sometimes people ask also. Um, so, um, actually, this is um, 
pretty much the the most effective or most efficient um, inverters what we have. Uh, so therefore, there's only a little, uh, a small amount of heat development, first of all. Uh, but still, it needs a cooling, of course. Um, so therefore, there's an aluminum heat sink uh, at the back of an inverter. Um, there's one big fan um, that uh, pull, sucks in the air uh, from the right-hand side of the inverter and blows the hot air out of the top. Uh, inside, uh, it's also um, an inverter that's just for circulating inside of the inverter. Usually, you know, the, the heat sink, uh, let's say the outside air is hermetically sealed, uh, so none, none of the outside air comes into the inverter. But uh, to improve the situation, still to be on the safe side, there's an inside fan that uh, circulates the, the air. Okay, I think uh, the most interesting bit, uh, that's what I think most of the people are interested in, is to, to hear about the system design. Um, and that's what we get most of the questions. So if you look at the data sheet, um, the first one thing that um, uh, jumps maybe into your attention is uh, the MPP voltage range. And uh, if you look at it, uh, there's a very narrow MPP voltage range. Um, and um, only in combination with one MPP uh, tracker, uh, people, people often ask us, so, wow, this is a really inflexible inverter. Why do you bring out this inflexible inverter? So, and the reason is basically, this is a measure kind of uh, to optimize um, commercial installations. So what you're gonna do uh, to get flexibility in system design, you kind of combine the eco inverters and the SIMO inverters. So whenever you can fit typically, for example, 25 kilowatts on a eco 25 or 30 kilowatts, for example, on an uh, eco 27, it depends, of course, which panels are you using. Uh, then, um, then you should use the eco, and for all the rest panels, uh, just uh, go for a SIMO inverter. So that you have get a very uniform. Uh, installation, you've got the same monitoring, the same mounting technology, everything is basically the same except maybe the inbuilt swing fuses of the ECO. Uh, but, uh, you know, what you gain is basically um, a flexibility in, in the system design uh, at the very low cost. Because uh, what you can say is that the ECO uh, is, is um, much more uh, cost attractive than other inverters on the market. Um, and that in combination uh, with the a SIMO, you get it basically gets both uh, strengths of two worlds, so the flexibility uh, and uh, low, low upfront costs uh, on the inverters. Um, I've got here an example, for example, when we talk about a 100 kilowatt installation, uh, you can use, for example, I've got here REC 260 watt panels in these examples. Um, so, for example, use um, always blocks of 30 kilowatts. So uh, five strings of 23 panels connected to an eco. So therefore, we build three units. Um, so that makes 90 kilowatts in total. Plus for the rest uh, panels, so I've got here 39 panels uh, left for going up to 100 kilowatts. Uh, and therefore, I simply use, uh, for example, uh, yeah, a SIMO 10. So I've got the low costs on the three ecos. Uh, and with the eco, I've got uh, this, uh, well, flexibility. Um, I don't know whether if you've dealt with uh, the Tiger platform recently, so that with the Tiger TS4, for example, as well as with the, the other units what we brought out before. Um, so you've got the possibility to get uh, have the flexibility already in the panels, so to say. So going with smart panels, uh, you can use, uh, for example, three eco 27s, uh, have a bit of more oversizing ratio. Here, go with uh, five uh, with the first eco. Here, we've got here on the left hand side, I've got five strings of 26 panels, so it makes 33.8 kilowatts. And the other two uh, go with five strings uh, of 25 panels each. Uh, and that brings you close to 100 kilowatts, so 99. Sorry, 98.8 kilowatts. Um, um, 
So, and with that technology, you could even save uh, one entire inverter. Uh, if you, for example, have a situation where you have maybe a bit of shading on the roof, uh, or if you want to uh, maybe also have um, panel level monitoring, uh, so this could be the solution for you, um, you know, saving one inverter, uh, but having other benefits by, uh, by using uh, the Tigo platform. Um, as I said beforehand, um, you know, were to double check whether the DC isolator is compliant, uh, I've got here an example. Um, so the first one is uh, the, using the Eco25 with, the, again, this REC 260 watt panels. So I've got here, for example, uh, four strings of 24 panels. So that it gives me exactly uh, 25 kilowatts. Um, so if I look at the current rating, so the maximum current rating of, from the PV array, which is the, uh, I'll have to basically look at the uh, short circuit current of the panel and multiply it by the amount of strings what I have, so that so I get the maximum current uh, what can appear on the array. Uh, so that's 36.04 uh, amp. And um, I look at the MPV voltage range at 20 degrees. So that's uh, in this case 737. And therefore, I double check uh, in the data sheet of the DC isolator. So I go with the 800 volts rating. Um, and if I multiply uh, the maximum current with 1.25, uh, which is the factor that the Australian installation st standard requires, uh, as you might know. So I come to a number which needs to be the uh, same uh, or smaller than this 45 amp at 800 volt, what the data sheet of the DC isolator tells me. So that means no additional DC isolators in this example here are needed uh, adjacent to the inverter. So saves balance of system costs. Um, if I look, for example, I'm using the same uh, panels, the REC 260s, uh, for the Eco27, uh, but here I'm using five strings instead of four strings that I had before. I uh, go with a string length of 23 panels, so I'm getting exactly 30 kilowatts. Um, so here for I have the five times the uh, short circuit current rating of the panel, uh, which gives me 45 amp. Um, here I've got the 23 strings per per. Uh, uh, sorry, 23 panels per string, which gives me a bit of a, a lower voltage. So uh, with 706 uh, volts of MVP voltage, I still look uh, at 800 volts. It would, might be a bit of a gray area, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, if you look at the 800 volt, it needs to be smaller than 45. Um, and uh, that's uh, but actually already too, uh, to collect the value of 45 amps multiplied by 1.25 is already greater than the 45 amp rating of DC isolator at 800 volts. Um, so that means you need DC isolators adjacent to the inverter. That does not mean that the inverter is unsafe or anything. It just uh, means that the uh, current rating, what we've got here in the data sheet, uh, complies with the installation standard. Um, the international um, current rating, what we've got here, uh, is not applicable, and that's why um, we can't use that rating here, and that's why uh, you have to use DC isolators and chase into the grid. All right, um, so I don't know, um, just look over to Miva whether, whether she got some uh, special questions about configuration so far. Uh, everything uh, okay? Um, answer so far seems so in this case uh, I continue with the installation part of the inverter um, I mean it's, everything should be if you're familiar with Fronius uh, uh, like Simos or even Framos for example um, should be quite familiar with you you've got the mounting bracket um, so when you talk about you know installation and uh, ground mount installation for example uh, you've got some options uh, to do a pole mounting um, but of course, wall mounts uh, easily uh, with the if the many um, mounting uh, yeah uh, holes on, on the back of the mounting plate. Um, so one one of the differences uh, is basically what I want to show you here uh, from the Eco since it is a, a single tracking unit. Um, the the 
dual pole fusing. So what you can see here in these pictures, uh, I pointed out uh, that you can see here. Give me one second. Um, so here in this upper area, you've got the double pole string fusing, so plus and minus, so which is required. So the inverters themselves they come without the fuses, they come only with bolts. Uh, so what you gotta do is you put uh, plug in the the correct uh, bolts. Oh, sorry, the fuses according to the uh, the panels what you're using, um, and um, and that's basically it. Um, there would be another option actually also for MC4 plugs um, or a DC, uh, DC search uh, protection as I mentioned beforehand. Um, so would also be available uh, at Fronius, but actually I have to say you can basically choose any um, like a thin rail mount able uh, DC search protection or what you can find, uh, find on the market here. Uh, type one or type two, like this combi, uh, search protection, for example. Here's a bit of close, close up, um, what you can see here. Uh, so here I've got on the left hand side, we've got the uh, for DC plus and the right hand side for the DC minus connection. Um, so as I said, usually you can run down the strings from the roof, uh, connected directly uh, at the in inverters terminals. Um, in case you come across uh, for some reason uh, that you want to have uh, a combiner box uh, somewhere on the roof and run only one, let's say uh, two main uh, cables down to the inverter, then therefore we've got this uh, DC connector kit, uh, which you can see here in the picture uh, below. So that allows, it's a kind of a bus bar that you can plug in into the connection terminals uh, and there you can uh, connect these uh, one, uh, let's say these two big cables, so to say. Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, um, over voltage protection I mentioned already. So there's the possibility to use type two or co combined unit with type one and two uh, available at Fronius uh, as well. Uh, that can be used actually either for the Ecos or for the Simon. So that since the Simon also has uh, thin rail space uh, available uh, there. Um, so if you come across uh, projects which are really large or, or ground mount installations, we've got this uh, possibility to go with the, the power package. Uh, the power package is basically an arrangement of multiple uh, Simon or Eco inverters uh, in conjunction with the AC combiner box and pre-manufactured cables. Um, so it is basically an individual package what we can do uh, or customize for you. Uh, for example, you can go uh, with the inverters and the combiner box but without the cables. You can choose from options that even if you want to have MC4 plugs or not, uh, still go with the um, you know, screw terminals, for example, and so on. And the idea is here, particularly when it comes to, to large scale uh, installations, uh, to have a quick way of uh, installing it and mounting it. And this is basically what this uh, video is showing you. I'm uh, gonna go down the, the volume here. So um, actually that, that racking system, what you can see here in this video, uh, by the way, does not come with the package. Uh, you can get the uh, easily manufactured uh, in Australia. That's the reason why we haven't brought that uh, into the country. Uh, but uh, everything else basically can be ordered from us. It's optional. Um, so you can even buy you know, SIMO and ECO units here to get the flexibility in system design. As I said beforehand, um, you can choose uh, to use these pre manufactured cables, um, monitoring if it is required, uh, and so on. So it's basically a, yeah, a customized package what we uh, on a, uh, yeah. Uh, looking into the uh, minor box, uh, box uh, for example, for example the fuses, uh, uh, you can choose, choose with or without with fuses, fuses, and also, also different fuse ratings, ratings uh, as, well as well as uh, all voltage protection, uh, like AC all voltage in this case, 
I've got here, uh, or even a service socket, you know, if you want to plug in um, or use some power tools uh, out in the field and you need a uh, PowerPoint here, so there would be a possibility for that. Um, yeah, so that's basically uh, it. Uh, um, one big uh, advantage, uh, advantage I want to point out still, our 10-year warranty promotion is still available. So you want to get an additional five-year warranty, warranty on top of the normal standards warranty. Uh, that's uh, for all three users, actually not just for people, it's for all of them. Uh, and that promotion we still have until the end of June. So make sure to register uh, your inverter online. So, so, yeah, that's, yeah, um, that's uh, basically, basically it. Um, if, you questions, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask us now. Ask us but now. of course, you can always contact us, contact us um, um, either, either on um, my uh, email. email. Uh, for, uh, for me, it's, it's uh, uh, Volker, so it's hater.volker.